So one game uh, from game theory which has applications to economics is the prisoner's dilemma. So this game involves two imaginary members of a criminal gang. They've been arrested for a crime and are being held separately, and the prosecutor offers each prisoner a choice. They can testify that the other person committed the crime, or they can remain silent. And their penalties will then be as follows. If one prisoner defects, only one, and betrays the other, that prisoner gets off and the other gets the full five years. If both prisoners remain silent, they both get two years on a lesser charge. And if both prisoners betray the other, they both get four years. So the payoffs in the, the table shown here represent the number of years saved from the, uh, the maximum penalty for each case, and the strategies are denoted C for cooperate or D for defect. And there's this one uh, where they, a strategy where they both defect is a Nash equilibrium, uh, so, because if either of them changes their strategy unilaterally, then they will be worse off. So um, this game, uh, game theory was uh, really invented uh, in large part by the mathematician John von Neumann, who also invented the theory of expected utility and uh, later also uh, invented quantum logic, one of the sort of formulations for quantum logic. And he, he was serving as an advisor to President Eisenhower on the, the use of the bomb. And he used uh, results from game theory to argue in favor of the first strike doctrine. Um, and after the Soviets developed their own weapons, this morphed into a, another kind of a strategy called a mutually assured destruction, or MAD. Um, so this uh, uh, game theory seems to give rather a kind of a bleak uh, view of, of human nature. And, and later experiments showed that, in fact, uh, people cooperate much more than, you know, game theory, rational choice, and so on would suggest. Uh, in fact, some 37% uh, of people choose to cooperate in, in the game, and uh, this fell to 10% if they knew the other person's strategy. So there's something missing from the, the classical version, and um, in, in the quantum version, each player's strategy is now going to be encoded by a qubit, which we can denote C or D. C is going to be 1, 0, D is 0, 1. And um, the joint strategy therefore exists in a two-dimensional Hilbert space, spanned by the, uh, these basis vectors. And uh, so, for example, if the strategy for A is C and that of B is D, then the joint strategy can be den denoted CD, which is going to be a tensor product again. And, and here they all are. So this is just the, uh, the computational basis for this game. And the strategies for the two players will be given by unitary operators RA and RB that only act on the player's own qubit. So, um, our, our circuit is going to be this one here. So we've got um, some initial states coming in on the qubits, then they're going to be acted on by this uh, unitary uh, operator here, which is a, uh, its role is to entangle the player's qubits. And then each of the two qubits are acted on by the individual strategies. And then we're going to apply the inverse over here, which uh, ensures that if you put a classical strategy in, you get a classical strategy out at the end. And then we'll calculate the uh, the payoffs in the same way as in the classical version. So as an example, we can choose the entanglement matrix to be this rather complicated looking fellow here. And uh, the initial state, so for example, has if we start with both players cooperating. So after operating with U, we, we get something like this, which you'll notice is now entangled because it's a mix of CC and DD. And we calculate the final state and the, and the payoff, and the payoff is going to look like this. Uh, th this is just from the, uh, the weight, the, the basic the penalty for each of the possible outcomes. And when you do a table of all the different possibilities, so the, the top uh, four results here are for the uh, classical versions of the game where the, the moves are only identity or the, um, the, the not gate which flips from cooperate to defect. And we get the usual outcomes over there for the, the two players. But when we have this all these extra quantum moves, so we've just shown some of them, so the players now have a choice of doing a class, mix of classical moves, but they're also allowed to do the Hadamard uh, gate. And what you see is that you end up with 
a, a new Nash equilibrium, which is better than the old one. So what does this uh, entanglement mean in, in game theory? Well, in, in, in quantum game theory is usually thought of as uh, representing some kind of a, a, quant a contract. Uh, so it can be used to model things like societal, societal norms, which are or the social contract. Um, one survey from 2018 concluded that quantum games produce counterintuitive outcomes such as greater prevalence of altruism than in the classical game, which uh, I think is interesting. You know, one thing about classical game theory is that it seems to teach you that altruism is counterintuitive. Um, I think a, a, another interpretation is to identify uh, player B with the person's objective outlook. So, so this, this is a person um, thinking about their own strategy, but they're also going to have beliefs about what the other person is going to do. They're going to have these sort of subjective beliefs about what the other person is going to do. And their response, their decision is going to depend on what they're thinking about the other person. So that is going to act as a, these beliefs are going to act as a, as a control. And um, so we, if we choose the entanglement matrix now to be the C naught gate, so this is my, my C naught gate here. Now the C naught gate has no effect on the, um, if, if we start with uh, everything in the cooperate, cooperate state, the C naught gate doesn't do anything to that. So we can just sort of omit that from the, uh, the beginning of the circuit here. Um, and so we're left with the same circuit exactly that we've been using for uh, projection sequence or uh, decisions in, in quantum cognition where we have uh, some subjective factors represented by this, uh, this gate here acting on the top qubit and some objective factors here on the bottom. And then we can think, you know, we can apply the quarter law to this, right? So um, the uncertainty about the other person's strategy is going to take the, the sort of the base rate of cooperation, which is 10% when you, you know what the other person is going to do, and it would add about a quarter to that which would bring you to around 35% uh, expected to cooperate, and, and this is in good agreement with experiment. 